In this video, we're going to look at a set of favorites in a folder that contains all the transaction codes that are necessary, and they're divided into groups. Further videos will discuss uh, the plant maintenance solution uh, by each individual group. This first video will look after introducing all the groups involved and the overall plant maintenance solution. So we'll start off with <coughs> the plant maintenance solution and all the different uh, sections that exist within it. The first section that exists is the technical structure section. Second structure is the maintenance section. Then the preventive maintenance we're going to have inventory, cycle count, purchasing, and reports. Um, within the technical structure, there exist uh, quite a few things. So the first thing that needs to be done is to create the technical structure. This will be done via data load. Uh, once the users have the technical structure, they could edit the technical structure directly from this T code IH01. If they sh wish to create further equipments, they go into IE01. If they need to create any more functional locations, they go into IL01. If they wish to manage their equipment, which means equipment that is installed or equipment that has been removed from the technical structure, then they go into IH08. Furthermore, if a plant wishes to have use, utilize the bill of materials, they could go in here and create a bill of materials for an equipment or a material and then edit the equipment bomb or a material bomb. This is only available for plants that have the PM full and not the PM light. The next one we'll deal with is the maintenance folder. Now the maintenance folder will consist of a folder with it for the work centers, which is the IR01, which is to create a work center, and then IR02 is to maintain or change the work centers. So the work centers will be the individual workers within a certain plant. After that, users will, will get acquainted with creating notifications, IW21, and then looking at a list of notifications, IW28, and then doing time entry against the notifications, IW48. Uh, all these t transaction codes here, some of them will require uh, uh, setup beforehand during the go-lives, and those t codes will have a star beside them. I will explain these t-codes later on in further videos when I dis discuss uh, go-live setups and um, it will all be explained there. Next one will deal with preventive maintenance. So you first have to create a preventive maintenance plan, IP41. Then you have a list of preventive maintenance plans you've created, so you have to edit them. So list of PM plans, IP2017. Then you have to do the PM forecasting, which means uh, predict what's coming up. So in this coming week, what preventive maintenance is going is due? That's IP24, and then you create the PM work orders via IP30 for the next, let's say, seven or 14 days, based off the forecasting. And then from there, you're gonna go and look at the work orders you created, IW38 for preventive. Next one, we're gonna look at. Inventory. Now inventory, only the plants that have PM4 will have inventory. So the way inventory will work, users will first look for a part via the old part number. This is the beginning when they're getting used to um, finding parts in SAP. So they'll use CL30N to find uh, new, uh, the SAP material numbers via the old part number. Afterwards, they'll go into MB52 to check out their current inventory. It's just a display. They also could do searches for parts via the inventory. Next one deals with uh, analyzing their consumption history. So MB51 shows them a list of all the things they've done in and out of inventory. Um, this will be explained a little further. Afterwards, they'll do receipts into the work orders or receipts from purchase orders into the inventory and that will be via Migo. Afterwards, they could go into MD04 and analyze their stock situation. So they could see, okay, which parts have purchase requisitions, which parts have uh, POs that are coming, and how many, or which parts have uh, demands for them via work orders. 
then they could do an MRP run for a single item, which is a single part, or they could do an MRP run for the whole plant using MD01. Now MD01 uses a batch program to run, a nightly batch program, so this should only be run in case of uh, emergencies. After this we'll look into cycle counts. So cycle counts deals with managing the inventory and uh, each, each plan has the option to do an inventory count, let's say once a week, once a month, once every six months, just like any other store. So the way you'll start is that the users will use MI31 to create a cycle count sheet. From there they'll, they could change the cycle count, add or remove parts. They could also enter a count and then you can look at the status of the cycle counts via MI24. From here they'll look into purchasing. From purchasing you'll first create purchase requisitions. So with ME5A you look at the purchase requisitions that you've created via MRP or manual via the work orders. From there you look at the purchase orders ME2N and then you look at the service entry sheets ML81N. Last but not least will be reports. So there's a series of reports that exist. This should not be done in a go live until the very end and this should only be done with qualified individuals such as the plant manager or the maintenance manager and should not be done with people that don't have a broad understanding of the, the whole scope of the business. So one example would be IW39 which, is our, which holds a series of maintenance reports. Then you have the time entry reports that shows all the hours have been submitted, by who, when, where. Then you have a technical structure status, parts turnover report, inventory consumption report. These are all the different folders that exist for plant maintenance. Um, users could add more transaction codes than this, but it is uh, highly recommend that you stick within these folders. Now, there will be a separate video. Each there will be a separate video for each folder. During the folder there will be one video that consists of talking about all the transaction codes here and why things are done the way they are and also the configuration behind anything there.